at nearly 90 metres long and weighing in at a hefty 5,800 tonnes, the RSS James Cook is an impressive sight. And whilst it was in dock at Southampton, we were invited to take a look around the research vessel. And who better to give us the tour than the ship's captain? Named after the explorer Captain James Cook, famed for discovering Australia, the research ship RSS James Cook is packed with scientific equipment designed to give us a better understanding of our oceans, as well as to probe previously unknown areas of the seabed. So I jumped at the chance to climb aboard to have a look around before the ship set sail for its next exploration. Uh, over the last uh, sort of uh, two, three months, uh, James Cook has been working out of Tenerife. Um, she was down doing a, a cruise about 240 miles southwest of Tenerife using an ROV. They were sampling the, the seabed and looking at the structure of the seabed. During that cruise they were fortunate enough to uh, rescue five Germans from a yacht that sank very close to them and then they dropped them back off at Tenerife. We then came back from Tenerife and we're now in Southampton uh, carrying a, a short maintenance period. We will then depart here on the 15th of February and we'll head off to Freeport Bahamas via Tenerife. The ship itself it has got a maximum endurance at sea of 55 days. Normal cruises run about from say one month, 30 days to uh, 45 days. Myself, I stay on the ship for two months and then I go home for two months. So we have two crews for, for one ship. Best thing, well, I get to drive the James Cook. I believe it's one of the most advanced technically and capability wise research ship in the world and I get the privilege to, to drive it and during this time we've conducted various cruises where we have used new technology and we've made new findings as well. On here now we all do it by computer so we just press two or three buttons and the ship will, it does it all for us by computer. So the computers have taken over what we used to do but we still have to monitor the computers so they still require a human interface at all times. Uh, we have what we call get me home charts with enough charts to get us home in case all our computer screens break down, we will be able to have enough chance to get us home. Life on board for the crew and scientists can be hard at times, but the ship has plenty of space to make it a home away from home. Hardships we face at sea, obviously we're away from home. We're spending up to 55 days at sea without anything to look at except the sea. There's obviously the isolation, the loneliness from your family, which is compensated by the time off. But whilst on the vessel, we do have access to the internet so we can email every day and we also get the chance to phone home as well so we're, although we're far away we're still quite close. The type of food that we have on board, you name it, we, we, we've got fish, meat, every Sunday night we have a, a steak night, Saturdays we have curry night, uh, Friday is always traditional it's uh, fish and chips in the evening and then we cater for all sorts of diets as well so we cover for vegetarians and celiac diets as well. So what have we got cooking for lunch today? Minestrone soup. And we've got liver bacon and sausage casserole. That's one of the biggest challenges we have is because the ship moves, see? So if we're in rough weather, if you're working in a restaurant on land, nothing moves, you just your day-to-day -day routine stays the same, hours can change from one minute to the next. Not forgetting that it's a working vessel, the ship has much heavy machinery, not only for its own propulsion, but also to handle the large pieces of scientific equipment on board. What sell are diesel generators? They provide all the electrical power for the ship. Inside this room here we've got our main switchboard for distributing the electricity and there's also two big electric motors which drive the propellers from the James Cook. It's quite a noisy and dangerous place to be in the environment here. Safety is my number one priority. Obviously uh, I have to provide a safe platform for the my crew and the scientists and technicians to work from, that's the main priority. Well, as the crew prepare for their next voyage, I made my way back onto dry land. This is Richard Stringer for That's Solent.